This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Now we come to the third phase, or the third phrase that Jesus uttered on the cross. And that third phrase revealed His compassion. They were words of compassion. John 19, verses 26 and 27, When Jesus saw His mother and the disciple whom He loved standing nearby, He said to His mother, Woman, behold your son. Then He said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple told her to come, or took her to his own home. That disciple was John, we believe. Now Jesus, Jesus notices His mother. He's hanging on the cross, going through such incredible agony. And he notices his mother and one of his disciples, John, which we assume, and they're not too far off. And he speaks some words of compassion that are just overwhelming when you think about them. I've often wondered if Mary remembered while she stood at the cross watching her son die. I wonder if she remembered the words of Simeon, the priest, when she and Joseph took baby Jesus for the first time to the temple. This is what happened. Jesus was born. It was time to take Him to the temple. It was was the Jewish custom and tradition. And they took Him to the temple as a baby. Luke 2, verses 34 and 35 say this, And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul. So that thoughts from many hearts will be revealed. Did you get that? Simeon said, he prophesied that. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also. I wonder if that Mary reflected. I wonder if that came to her. I don't know. But it's interesting, isn't it? Mary was poor. Mary was poor, always had been poor. And it may even have been that she no longer had a home in Nazareth. It would be the oldest son's responsibility to provide to care for a widowed mother. And while it may very well have been possible and maybe even probable that the other sons would have taken on that responsibility, Jesus took it upon Himself to make sure that she was taken care of when He spoke to John and He said, Behold your mother. This is so much the way that God does things. It's just the way that God does things. He knows our need, and He knows how to meet that need. And He usually meets it in ways that we don't expect. After all, the expected thing would have been for the rest of the family to pitch in. But apparently Jesus knew better. Maybe He just knew the circumstances, and He knew that she would need somebody who could be responsible, and He trusted John more than He trusted His brothers and sisters. So in His dying moments, filled with his, this tenderness for His mother, He did two things. First of all, He provided for her need. And secondly, He assigned one of His own, one of his own, one of his own disciples, He assigned to them a specific ministry and responsibility. This is so beautiful. You see, compassion, when we show compassion, we're doing two things. We're meeting needs, but we're also fulfilling a calling, a ministry. In Jesus' act of compassion, we can learn so much about how we are supposed to share compassion. First of all, compassion is the nature of God. Compassion is the nature of God. It is an inordinate compassion to automatically take pity on anyone and everyone who comes along and give away our time and energy and resource, resources to somebody we feel sorry for. Listen to what I just said. It is an inordinate compassion to automatically take pity on anyone and everyone who comes along to give away our time, energy, and resources to one we feel sorry for. I learned this from my dad. Living in Honduras, I mean, every, the poorest country in Latin America at that time, I think now Venezuela is, but Honduras is still there. And it was this destitute country, and everybody suffered. I mean, the whole country was suffering. And and you just saw poverty everywhere. But Dad didn't just go out and just give out food and stuff to everybody. 
He picked, he focused, he pointed. And I believe it was just God's leading him who to minister to. When we just go out and feel sorry for anybody and everybody and just do anything and everything that we can for anybody and everybody, we're not doing it God's way. Compassion, you see, has a purpose. Compassion has a purpose. Compassion has a plan. Compassion is a tool in God's hands. Therefore, we need to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit in how we share our compassion. It is never to be led by emotion or feelings. Listen to me. This is so important. Your compassion is never to be led by your emotions and feelings. Your compassion is never to be led by your emotions and feelings. Your compassion is never to be led by your emotions and feelings. Just because you see starving children on TV saying your $15 a month will feed a family of 12 for the rest of their lives is not the reason to give. It is never to be led by emotion and feelings. Listen to me. How has compassion come? It is to be led by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, of God, to let Him place us where He wants us, when He wants us, and how He wants to use us. Did Jesus heal everybody? No, He didn't. He healed a lot of people. But you can't say that He healed everybody in Jerusalem. Compassion is a tool in God's toolbox that He uses to minister. And He uses you to be compassionate as a tool, as a ministry. The second thing about compassion, first thing was compassion is the nature of God. The second thing is that compassion is personal. It's personal. You'll notice in the life of Jesus that He was burdened for the people. He was concerned for large groups that follow Him. He wept for the masses. But his compassion was exercised on one person at a time. Think about that. He hurt for the people. He wept for the masses. But his compassion was exercised on one person at a time. It was personal. And thirdly, compassion. Oh, this is what we close with. This is so important to get. Compassion is a ministry. It's a ministry. It's a calling. I love this principle. Notice that while Jesus was expressing his compassion and direction to his mother, he gave John a ministry. A ministry of compassion. Don't miss this point. When God directs you to share compassion, it's not about feeling sorry for someone or just wanting to ease somebody's pain or wanting to comfort them in their need. It's a ministry. It's a calling. And that means that God is up to something in your life and through your life, and get this, and in that person's life. Oh, please understand how important this issue is. Compassion is a calling, it's a ministry, and it means that God is up to something, let me reverse the order, in that person's life, but it also means that He's up to something in your life. What an amazing example God gave us on the cross by entrusting us with a ministry to another on a personal basis. Yes, we hurt for the people. We may weep for the masses. But compassion is to be personal. And God still does that today. He still calls His own to ministries of compassion. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.